Your Honor, it is over now. This has never been a case of trying to get free. I didn't ever want freedom. Frankly, I wanted death for myself. This was a case to tell the world that I did what I did not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. I knew I was sick or evil or both. Now I believe I was sick. The doctors have told me about my sickness and now I have some peace. I know how much harm I have caused. I tried to do the best I could after the arrest to make amends, but no matter what I did, I could not undo the terrible harm I have caused. My attempt to help identify the remains was the best that I could do, and that was hardly anything. I feel so bad for what I did to those poor families, and I understand their rightful hate. I know I will be in prison for the rest of my life. I know that I will have to turn to God to help me get through each day. I should have stayed with God. I tried and failed and created a whole lost. Thank God there will be no more harm that I can do. I believe that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save me from my sins. I have instructed Mr. Boyle to end this matter. I do not want to contest the civil case. I have told Mr. Boyle to try and finalize them if he can. If there is ever any money, I want it to go to the victim's families. I have talked to Mr. Boyle about other things that might help ease my conscience in some way of coming up with ideas on how to make some amends to these families, and I will work with him on that. I want to return to Ohio and quickly end that matter so that I can put all of this behind me and then come right back here to do my sentence. I decided to go through this trial for a number of reasons. One of the reasons was to let the world know that these were not hate crimes. I wanted the world in Milwaukee, which I deeply hurt, to know the truth of what I did. I didn't want unanswered questions. All the questions have now been answered. I wanted to find out just what it was that caused me to be so bad and evil. But most of all, Mr. Boyle and I decided that maybe there was a way for us to tell the world that if there are people out there with these disorders, maybe they can get some help before they end up being hurt or hurting someone. I think the trial did that. I take all the blame for what I did. I hurt many people. The judge in my earlier case tried to help me, and I refused his help, and he got hurt by what I did. I hurt those policemen in the Conorac matter, and I shall ever regret causing them to lose their jobs, and I hope and pray that they can get their jobs back because I know they did their best, and I just plain fooled them. For that, I am so sorry. I know I hurt my probation officer, who was really trying to help me. I am so sorry for that and sorry for everyone else that I have hurt. I have hurt my mother and father and stepmother. I love them all so very much. I hope that they will find the same peace I am looking for. Mr. Boyle's associates, Wendy and Ellen, have been wonderful to me, helping me through this worst of all times. I want to publicly thank Mr. Boyle. He didn't need to take this case, but when I asked him to help me find the answers and to help others, if I could, he stayed, stayed with me and went way overboard in trying to help me. Mr. Boyle and I agreed that it was never a matter of trying to get off. It was only a matter of which place I would be housed the rest of my life, not for my comfort, but for trying to study me in the hopes of helping me and learning to help others who might have problems. I know I will be in prison. I pledge to talk to doctors who might be able to find some answers. In closing, I just want to say that I hope God has forgiven me. I know society will never be able to forgive me. I know the families of the victims will never be able to forgive me for what I have done. I promise I will pray each day to ask for their forgiveness when the hurt goes away, if ever. I have seen their tears, and if I could give my life right now to bring their loved ones back, I would do it. I am so very sorry. Your Honor, I know that you are about to sentence me. I ask for no consideration. Shirley Hughes and I'm Tony Anthony Hughes mother I would like to say to Jeffrey Dahmer that he don't know the pain the hurt the loss and the mental state that he had put our family in my name is Dorothy Strader I'm Curtis Strader's mother um I don't have nothing prepared to say it's just a few things that I would like to say you took my 17 year old son away from me I'll never get a chance tell him that I loved him. I'd have a chance to tell him that I love him the last time I saw him, which will be a year tomorrow. I'm a J.W. Smith, uh, brother of Edward Warren Smith. Edward Warren Smith tried to be Jeffrey Dahmer's friend. As a result, 
he lost his life. Mr. Donald, Eddie's gone now, the victim of your senseless Where do we go from here? We ask ourselves, why did this happen to a person like Eddie? My name is Inez Thomas, and I'm the mother of David Thomas. You know, I don't understand how a person could really harm a person and to say that, well, I did this because he wasn't my type. Well, if everybody go around doing something to somebody because it's their, their type, this would be a sad world today. And I just feel that this man should never be able to walk the face of earth or to be able to harm anyone else again. Good morning, Honor. My name is Donald Bradoff. I'm the, for the Bradoff family, as much as love in our family and close, my mother gave five beautiful kids. We lost, he destroyed the baby of the family, and I hope you go to hell. I love this world. You guys did a wonderful job. Bottom of my heart, thank to God, I'm, I've got a lot of strength. Thank you all. God bless America. Well, My name is Rita Isbell, and I'm the oldest sister of Errol Lindsay. Jer whatever your name is, Satan, I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. I don't want to ever see my mother have to go through this again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you, mother. Turn to the right like the fish tank is here. I'm turning all the way over here. You yeah. turn to your right to look at it? To look at the fish tank, right. And when that happens, what happens to you? Oh, all of a sudden, a handcuff and a knife is pulled on me. Yeah. Handcuff is placed on your body? Where? Uh, on my left wrist. And you see a knife? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you yeah. do? What'd you say to him? I asked him what the problem was, you know, that it's not necessary to do this, you know. What'd he say? Uh, he told me at that point if I wouldn't do what he said, he would, yeah. What did you do when you got in the bedroom as he's holding on to the cuff and the knife? What did you do? Well, I'm studying this talking, trying to be friends with him. You know? Did you remain standing? Did you sit down? Oh, he made me sit down at that point. We both sit on the bed. Was it at the foot of the bed, side of the bed, head uh, of the bed? Maybe halfway between. Did that room have a TV set in it? Yes. Was there anything going on on the TV? Yeah, the Exorcist movies was playing at that time. Did you observe him watching the movie and how he would react to the movie? Right, he would like this start rocking back and forth, when he, you know, certain parts of the movie or whatever. And you have to say, what did he say, man? It was like chanting in certain times and rocking back and forth. Right? Okay, did you and he move off of the bed at any time? Yes, he wanted me to lay flat down, stomach down on the floor at that time. He kind of laid across me, put his head across my chest at that point. What was he doing with his head? Pardon me? What did it appear to you he was doing with his head? What was he trying to do? Like he was listening to my heart, because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. It's been three weeks, and it's been like a long time, I know, for you, and it's been for us as well. I am advocate for the people of the state of Wisconsin. I've been that way, that, in that role for a long time. I'm very proud and very happy to be doing it. First, we started out by saying the burden of proof in this case is on the defendant. That's unusual in the system of justice. But what we say in the state of Wisconsin is Jeffrey Dahmer has killed 15 people. He sits here a in this courtroom, convicted of being a killer. He now asks you not to hold him responsible for those killings. This guy decided that he is going to make Stephen Dix die so that he could extend his sexual desire, his pleasure. The court will impose a mandatory life sentence plus an additional 10 years on the habitual criminality. 
15 uh, life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence to be consecutive to count 14. I have, believe I have and I intended to follow the recommendation of the state. I, I could have said something different which would have had the same impact. I really see nobody gains anything by just to say more and more years. The important point is that the sentence is structured in such a way that this defendant will never again see freedom.